Thank you. The chair will now recognize Mr. Cloud for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and may I again wish you happy birthday. Thank you all for being here. Um, Mr. Mikett, at the beginning of your written testimony, you say that there's no better innovative force than the private sector, but if you really want energy innovation, you need to show innovators that there's a market waiting for them. Can you speak to what recommendations you would encourage for uh, energy innovation in the market? Sure, I think uh, a lot of things are already in place showing en energy innovators that, that there's market access for them. Paris Climate Agreement is a great example, right? A lot of countries are saying they want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and that innovate that incentivizes people to innovate ways of doing it. Um, speaking kind of more at a U.S. national level, I think there's a lot of things that could be done on the fiscal side, whether that's a carbon price or smarter regulations than we have today, to create a, a competitive marketplace. Um, there are um, intermediate steps that can be taken when things aren't quite ready to scale into the market. Um, you know, a good example of that would be the 45Q tax credits that are uh, presently offered for producers or people who carbon capture carbon and uh, sequester it or use it in some manner at uh, new facilities. That gives you your first few. And then on the back end, it, there is the scientific and energy engineering enterprise, which reduces the cost of doing all of this. Thank you. Um, I hail from Texas, specifically the 27th District of Texas, uh, Gulf Coast. Uh, my district includes nuclear power. We have the number one energy exporting port in the nation. We have wind energy. Uh, we have LNG uh, crude um, exports. Uh, very diverse as far as an energy portfolio is concerned. Uh, Texas is a leader in that, also a leader in wind energy, uh, and just having, generally speaking, a diverse part portfolio. Um, the Green New Deal, however, tries, uh, seeks to limit that to specifically non-carbon produced energy in the next 10 years. Is, is that feasible um, without crippling innovation and economy? Uh, or do you think that with new technologies, fossil fuels should, could play a part uh, going forward? Um, uh, two things. One, I'm not a big fan of timetables uh, generally. I think we know enough to, that we should be trying to bring low carbon technology to market, um, setting super ambitious goals. Um, I, I understand the impulse. I totally agree. but. Um, I think it, you know you can kind of get in your own way, and where we find ourselves today, um, that's a very ambitious goal for for where we've been. Um, I think there the climate doesn't particularly care where energy comes from, so long as it's not emitting CO two, and that means that there are a lot of reasons why you'd want to pursue a diverse innovation portfolio. Uh, you say the climate doesn't necessarily care where emissions come from. In a sense, too, the market doesn't care where the energy source comes from. Um, and the appetite globally for energy is growing. And it, it seems like one can make the case in the sense that we've now become a leading exporter of energy to the world, uh, which is in essence creating stability in the world. People are able to buy energy from us instead of countries that hate us. Um, U.S. companies generally also are more likely to care about being good stewards of creation, so to speak, than, than other uh, energy producing nations. Could it, the case be made that uh, this continued progress in this sort of realm would actually have more of a beneficial environmental effect going down the line? Um, yeah, if I interpret you correctly, I, I, I think so. Generally, U.S. practices are uh, at the higher end uh, on lots of environmental compliance issues. It also means, you know, freely available low carbon energy is the thing that's going to power the 21st century and make everybody better off. And could you also speak to how important a thriving economy is to creating innovative solutions? Uh, it's totally, uh, totally essential. What we, what, what we seek at the Scan Center, what I think is best for this issue, is an economy that's flexible to new information that can um, provides routes for people to finance new projects and find profits where they where they can make them. And then generally, we want those as long as those are low carbon options. Everything, everybody gets better off. That's exactly what we're looking to achieve. 
Thank you. I yield.